Hi, this is Adian, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Super Alloy Wheelie Survivalist. On the front of the box, they've been bold enough to use the typeface of the Transformers, but instead of the Transformers, it's the Transformer. So maybe they thought that would be enough to get away with it. But either way, I think this is primarily coming straight from China. I doubt that they've got that much to worry about when it comes to distribution of these things. I bought this one off eBay for $44, which was a really good price as far as I'm concerned. It's pretty hard to come by because being so much of a blatant ripoff of Transformers, there aren't many shops who'd be willing to sell this item. So I've noticed that a few sellers pop up now and then, and you just have to snipe them when they become available because they don't want to be there for the long run drawing too much attention. Other blatant infringements that you can see on this box are the word Autobot. Now, I don't know about whether you can trademark Transformer. I'm pretty sure that you can't, but I am pretty sure that you can trademark Autobot. So that was a pretty big risk that they took putting the word Autobot on there. And perhaps if Super Alloy or Yom G, like it says up in the corner here, hadn't used the word Autobot, maybe more people would have been willing to sell this. Either way, I love the product. I love this box. Both the pictures here show Wheelie, Wheelie in his updated G1 form and this is exactly the kind of thing that I want from Wheelie. I missed out on the Generations Minibot Wheelie a couple of years ago and wasn't willing to pay the 80 to $90 that the three of those Minibots from that wave ended up going for. So this is a real fantastic thing for me to get a hold of. The box art on the front is really good and I think high quality. I'm not sure if this has been used by someone. Have they stolen this box art or is this uh, original piece? Either way, I really like it and I would be a bit disappointed if they had just lifted this from somewhere because it really sells the product and I think with such a good toy inside, I hope that they've been the ones who created this picture because it would be a shame to steal that. Anyway, turning the box around, we can see at the bottom there is a G1 style tech spec. We have strength, intelligence, speed, endurance, rank, courage, firepower and skill. So all the usual G1 fields. And let's see, what's Wheelie's highest value here? His endurance. So I guess that's because he was the last survivor of his crash ship and he lasted so long on Quintessa maybe. He's got a lot of endurance from that. Anyway, going on over here, we've got the full picture of Wheelie that was only partially shown on the front. And the text that goes along with that is... Function, survivalist. And the quote, Only the fierce shall live. Wheelie is the sole survivor from a party of intergalactic colonists who crash-landed on Earth. He's a barbaric little savage who managed to stay alive by cunning, stealth and fearlessness, speaks in odd rhyming sentences and despises the Decepticons, fights only when he's under attack and has to defend himself, staunch friend to the Dinobots and a reliable ally for Hot Rod and Cup. So that's weird. Crash landed on Earth. I don't think that's ever been part of the story. But anyway... Maybe they didn't. Maybe they weren't clear on that, or maybe they just didn't watch enough G1. Flipping the box over, on the top we have the same graphics. On the side, another one. Same with the other end. On the back, we have a really nice picture of the Dinobots fighting some Sharktacons in a sort of monochrome goldish colour and a bit of a tease for one of their next characters. This next character seems to be Power Glide. I actually already have this Power Glide. This is I would like to get the Super Alloy one, but I think it's identical is the X Transbots Power Glide. And that figure isn't really as good as this wheelie. May maybe if he was bigger, but he's not. The X Transbot one is about the same size and I think that uh, it falls a bit short, so I might show that on another review. But anyway, going back to this, 
it seems that they were pretty clear about Dinobots when it came to drawing the artwork, so maybe there was a bit of a mix-up with the, the bio mentioning Earth. So let's get this box open and see what's inside. Okay, I actually opened this before I'm showing it here, so if it looks a little bit messy on some of the stickers, that's because I've had a go at it already. But what we've got in the box is a poster. Um, I'll open that up in a moment. Let me just put it over here. This large sticker sheet with tons of Autobot and Decepticon symbols. This is really handy. I could use this on other things, not just wheelie here. Even it has, what's this, the Elite Guard Autobot symbol. So I'm pretty sure it's a big no-no to use Autobot symbols in these third-party packages. But again, coming straight from China, I don't think they give a shit. Anyway, as well as that, we've got plenty of letters to choose from and numbers. Although they, they seem to be backwards, inexplicably backwards. And considering the other side is what sticks, that's a bit weird. And let's have a close look here. Focus. This one says, Wheel, this one is Wheelie Survivalist. So maybe he can have a tattoo of him, his own name on his butt. It's pretty unusual. I've used a lot of these ones on him, so I like this little detailing. There were more of these, there were four more of them over here. I've already applied those stickers to Wheelie, so that's a useful kind of thing. I might even use those on some other figures. Okay, putting that aside, we'll open the tray. He comes in a nice, secure tray, so there's no worries about his die-cast parts getting chipped in transit. This is a pretty quality package. In fact, the whole thing is such high quality, it's really a pity that they had the copyright violations all over it, or trademark violations all over it, because this would have got a much wider release if it wasn't for that kind of crap. Anyway, taking the lid off, we have inside two cards. The first one, this bio card, just has a really glossy picture of wheelie on the front. It's quite a thick card, like it's a credit card thickness and on the back we have the same bio that was on the box earlier with the tech spec with a kind of technical diagram of wheelie there so this is a really nice card again really high quality and just to top it off we've got the same card exactly on a translucent plastic card I don't know why they included this but it's a nice touch. So these are awesome cards, and if you're into collecting the cards that come with different Transformers, these will be a beautiful addition to a card collection. I don't collect cards that much, but I can still appreciate the quality of these things. Putting that aside, we have the tray itself with Survivalist Wheelie inside. He doesn't come with this Autobot sticker. I've applied this. You don't have to put it there, so I've already put um, some stickers on him. So I'm going to put this down and before I get him out I'll show you that poster. Okay, it's hard to not make it glare on screen because it's a little bit bent. Um, here it is. It's a pity they had to fold it down the middle to fit it in the box because my one's already started to get worn out in that corner. So it's not something I'm going to ever put on a wall. But it's a pretty nice picture and it looks like it's an original. I'm not sure on that, but I haven't seen this anywhere else before. So that's a nice touch. They've done this on the back of the instruction sheet. So turning it over to the other side, there are some original first kind of wave G1 style instructions. I remember this style from the very first uh, toys I got from probably Soundwave, I think. So having a closer look, we'll just skim through these. They seem to be photos, so they're not uh, line drawings or computer renderings. They're actually printed colour photos. Let's have a look now at the toy itself. Survivalist wheelie, which is virtually a masterpiece wheelie. This thing is a truly amazing third-party product when you look at the kind of quality that's gone into it. At such a low price. 
the first thing you notice when you take this out of the box is this guy is heavy. Like he's compared to other almost yeah, his deluxe size, compared to other deluxe size figures, this guy he weighs a ton. And that's because he's loaded with metal die cast. So going over the different die cast parts, let's start here. We've got the toes. Nice cold feeling toes. Moving up further, we've got the inner part of the wheel. This is die cast as well. The outer part is real rubber. How long has it been since we get real rubber on these figures? This thing drips with quality. Moving up to the body, the whole front section of the body in this lighter orange color is beautifully die cast with the front panel here being plastic. The fists, each one of these fists is die cast so you can see that they're on a a pin here, this, like not a pin, uh, it's a, this is like a thin section that goes into a ball no need to worry about snapping that off because it's it's metal, it's not going to snap off. Turning him around to the back, get a bit of focus, the back section with, even with this sharp detail is also beautiful die cast. This is a quality product. And finally the inside section of the upper wheel, die cast with rubber wheels around the outside. Apart from the metal, the other materials used in this are also higher quality than what transformers I buy from regular shops are. The plastic has no swirls in it whatsoever. It's really fine grained and uh, some sections are painted but the unpainted sections you can see don't have any kind of swirling. They're crisp detail, clear plastic, no, no mold stress points or anything like that. So it just boggles the mind how such a tiny company could produce a piece like this when Hasbro, who make millions of toys, don't seem capable any longer of being able to produce quality products. If I get close to the face, you can see his face, pure comic style, movie style, G1. This is a really good representation of Wheelie. I could recognize this character just from the face. You wouldn't need to show me any other detail and I would be able to tell you that that's Wheelie. He's got that youthful smile. Uh, his eyes are a little bit big. It's, it, it, it smacks of Wheelie. Uh, if there was just one thing that I would change, I would probably make his eyes a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more blue because they don't really pop out from the face being that pale almost gray shade of blue like the rest of his head. Coming back down we can see that I've applied a few stickers so here's the one I was talking about earlier this detailing on the leg so the stickers are clear and once you apply them uh, you can see the black and color through but the rest of it you just see the base sh um, showing through the sticker. I've put on the back his bum tattoo like I mentioned survivalist. So I didn't want to put his name on his backside, that would just be weird. As far as posability goes, he's not super posable. In order to be faithful to the look and transformation, they've limited him a bit. So he does stand up very well. So you can see he stands right there. His shoulders are on balls, but there is not much side to side available on the shoulder. You do get a full 360 rotation. The head is on a ball and you can get a massive amount of posability in the up and down direction. He has a rotation right around. Um, there's a bit of side to side but not much. It's limited by the size of the base of the neck but given that that looks how I want it to look I'm going to forgive that. On the elbow we have 90 degrees and it's on a ball. On the wrist, the wrist has in and out like this for the transformation. It's actually stiff but uh, it can go the whole way and that angle is about 90 on the inside. So you don't get, you get a tiny bit of up and down on the wrist, wrist and if you really squeeze it hard, which I don't want to do much, you get this 
rotation of the hand for posing with uh, anything you might want to put in his hand. On the legs, we have balls on the thighs, or the, sorry, the hip. So we've got a bit of side to side, but again, limited by transformation. And we get a bit of back to front. On the knee, we have 90 degrees pin joint. And the toes also are on a ball and have pretty wide range of motion. He can make any kind of angle you want, so long as the hips will take it. So that's as far apart as I can spread his legs, but his feet are still flat on the ground. With the head being able to tilt so far back, you can get some really good crawling poses, maybe maybe even for some sniper action, but he doesn't come with a weapon, so you have to supply your own weapon. And being that this is not a standard peg size, you might have a few problems when it comes to supplying a weapon. One little fallback that you just saw then is this chest piece doesn't really pin in too well. I've stuck a tiny bit of blue tack there, you can see, to hold it in, but these two die cast nubs don't want to fit too well into the plastic holes that they meant to go in, and that's probably due to some kind of um, size problem you get when working with die cast due to uh, shrinkage. I heard die cast can shrink a bit, and maybe it's not easy to predict that shrinkage beforehand. As you might have heard, there's going to be a new um, Asian exclusive, well, maybe not so Asian exclusive, wheelie made from the deluxe class jazz mold, just decked out in orange colours with a new. Uh, G1 kind of wheelie head. So I don't have that toy yet, but what I can show you next to is the Jazz himself. So it'll be exactly the same size as this, just with a little bit different styled head. So you can see that the new wheelie is going to be quite a bit bigger than this guy. And I don't know, I'm going to buy that new wheelie. I really like the look of it, but I think this is probably the definitive wheelie. Wheelie is a kid. He's meant to be a bit smaller than the other Transformers. So making him a smallish deluxe is the way to go. And uh, I think Hasbro did a good job picking the Jazz Mold for the new wheelie because in vehicle mode he really has curves that are closer to the vehicle mode of wheelie than any other current deluxes. So that's not really a criticism on the Hasbro version that's coming, but size-wise... This guy is more appropriate, I think. Ah, oh, why boy hurt my nose? Me wheelie say find friends today. Me Grimlock say that you are... Another way that a lot of fans are going to want to pose this wheelie is with MP Grimlock, because we all remember in 1986 where wheelie was riding the back of Grimlock. The scale is a bit off. MP Grimlock isn't quite big enough to match how he appeared in the movie, but given that this is an MP kind of wheelie, I think, this is the best way to put it. Unfortunately, wheelie's legs aren't going to spread wide enough apart to be able to ride straight on his back. So he'll be able to stand there, but um, that he can look alright, I guess, but it looks more like he's humping Grimlock than actually riding him. So if you want a good photo opportunity or just a static display for your shelf, what I tend to do is try to fold one of the legs back. So if you can fold the leg back, you can get a pretty decent pose like that. And it looks like he's, he's whoop. Anyway, it looks like he's it looks like he's straddling Grimlock. And if you play with it a bit, you can get a, a solid um, situation where he's not going to fall off like that. I think it's time to transform this guy. To transform Wheelie, the first thing I want to do is get the head into the body cavity. It's not a straightforward, just bend over kind of thing, because it doesn't really fit through the hole if you bend it over. I don't know how to explain this, I'll just have to show it. So if we angle it in like that, we can push it down. It actually becomes much harder to get it up you have to practice it so I've 
got that down pat now. I can do it pretty well. But the only way to get it up easily is how I'm showing it. On the top, with a little bit of rotation like that, that's pretty much the only way to do it. And actually, if I flip this up, we've got... Oh, look. He's transformed into G1 Wheelie. Anyway, continuing. Point the toes down like this. They're going to need to be rotated later. I just can't remember exactly which way. So we'll leave them pointing down. Next, we're going to bend the chest section up. It won't peg in. So it seems like it's not meant to go that way. It is. So it'll, it'll hold together later on. We're going to get this hip section. Rotate a leg up like this. So he's pointing out. And then we're going to twist it this way. So you can see that brings this peg and tab facing in, inwards instead of backwards. Do the same with the other leg. Bend it up at the hip and rotate it outwards. This is going to peg together now here. So it's not, it's not super joined, but it's joined enough. Next, we want to grab these toes that we pointed downwards before and we want to turn them so the flat section is facing what will be away from the ground. So they're pretty tight, but you've got to bend them. Ugh, that's a very tight one. Bend it around like this. It's not too much worry about breaking it off because it is a metal ball in a plastic socket, so I don't think it will snap. So now what we have is those facing down. Then we want to get these sections here, which have been at the front of the shin, and pull it out. So look, look at that from this angle. It pulls out, and then it will move. This has to rotate away, and it will move up and over the front like that. So looking at the other side, pull it out, rotate this section back, and snap it in over the front. So that's going to form the front of his little car. Next we want to grab a hold of this the head part inside and make sure that it is right down as far as it will go down and as far back as it will go because it has a hard time fitting where it's got to go. Then we can bend the whole body down like this in on itself and if you've done it right the head will just, it will just touch the legs and it will just fit together so if you lift the head up a little bit, he won't be able to bend forward. Next, these arms have to have remained straight, and the hands are going to slot into this little cavity here. So we're going to grab his hand and bend it over 90 degrees, and put it into that cavity. Okay, his vehicle mode isn't really solid. You can see that there are still gaps here and there where it would have been nice if he fitted together better in vehicle mode but I think that has been a kind of sacrifice to get the robot mode look how it looks and given that Wheelie doesn't have a realistic vehicle mode to begin with the robot mode was the more important of the two. He does have some nice angles to view it from. So if you look at it straight on from the side, he looks pretty nice from the side. I mean, that says wheelie to me. From the back, it looks like wheelie. If you have a straight on front view, it looks pretty good. Uh, all in all, not very bad. I'll put it down on the ground. So he does roll, but... His wheels are a little bit wonky. Maybe that's because the maybe they're not. Look, you can see that one there. It's got a defect in it. Let me try that again. I think that the why it doesn't roll is that these wheels have a little bit of travel in them, and when you put it on the ground, occasionally the rubber part is bumping other parts of the toy, which is giving it a bit of drag. So. Even though we, we like the rubber in this 
particular toy, the rubber is the cause of it not rolling, strangely enough. Here's Wheelie next to his best friend, a G1 reissued hot rod, or Rodimus Major, I can't remember what that's called. So next to each other they are very similar in size, I think appropriately sized. Although the hot rod rolls better than wheelie rolls. It's a pity that hot rod's gun won't fit into wheelie's hand actually. Seeing that hot rod has two guns it would have been useful to be able to share the guns between the two. Considering such good friends they are. One thing really doesn't have any of is chrome, but his character design doesn't have any chrome. But uh, I think I might have liked just a little bit of chrome somewhere, maybe in the rims of the wheels it would have been nice. He's really again next to his friend Hot Rod, but this time next to the masterpiece version of Hot Rod. Um, which one is this? I think this is a Hasbro one. Anyway, passable scale-wise, I don't find it too bad, because remember, Wheelie is supposed to be smaller, but I think it's a little bit too small in comparison. And when you look at it next to the robot mode, you can see that... I'm not even going to bother to transform that to show. Robot mode is way too small. Wheelie's only going to come up to his crotch, which... They don't fit well together. So, whereas Willie is excellent with the Masterpiece Grimlock, doesn't really belong with the Masterpiece Hot Rod. So, my final thoughts on Survivalist Willie are definite buy. I highly recommend it to anyone who likes the character Willie. He's a really good value proposition at under forty-five dollars. What I paid for it, um, that stacks up nicely compared to any other third-party figures around at the moment. Um, I think if you look at a comparable size figure like maybe Fans Project Thunder Shred, for example, he's going for around $60. I'm pretty sure you could pick up this wheelie for around $60 quite easily still at the moment. And um, although he lacks a little bit of posability, like what you would get with some other third-party toys right now, uh, he makes up for it more than enough with his die-cast metal content and extremely faithful rendition to the source material. So I can't praise this highly enough and I hope that you will be able to get a hold of one. Thanks for watching.